There's no doubt that 21st century man has come a long way from our hunter-gatherer origins. Good morning, it's Ryan here to book the annual service on the boiler. In Britain today, we take food, shelter and warmth for granted. And most of us consume rather than create. I want to find out what happens if you strip man of all the luxuries and the conveniences of modern living and then force them to fight for their very existence. 13 British men have been abandoned on a remote Pacific desert island. With just the clothes to stand up in and a few basic tools. These guys are completely alone, filming everything themselves. Okay, got him. This isn't about talk, this is about action. If you think you can do it, prove it. One wrong move, and this place will take you down. When pushed to the extreme, do they still have what it takes to survive? Can't believe right, it! Right. This is dangerous. Coming in, coming in, Grace! ago, 13 British men were cast away on this remote Pacific island. Get a foot on. They're alone, with no provisions and only a handful of basic tools. So we've got three knives. Three knives, three machetes. Yeah. That's it. Three of the men are trained and experienced cameramen. Can I pass the camera up to you? But they are living under exactly the same conditions as everyone else. So far, these 13 British guys have survived for three weeks totally alone on this desert island. You know, that's no mean feat. But they're now divided on how to find food. Tonight, Saki, me and Dan are going out to find Cayman. I've opted out of Cayman hunting. Without unity... There's a lot of people just sitting around doing f all, really. ..and no clear sense of direction, the men are sabotaging their own chances of survival. If you are looking for food, why shouldn't you get any? Mate, come on, why are you here? It will become Lord of the Flies. And then we start sticking some of the weaker ones on a raft and send them off to another <laughs> island. Hey, grow up, don't walk away. I actually think that the hardest part of survival, harder than finding the food, is keeping everybody together. <sighs> I'm so hungry now. The truth is, if they don't start working together, looking after each other, thinking smart, being resourceful and surviving, they haven't got a cat's chance to make it to the end of this month. Good morning, it's uh, Saturday the 22nd of February. Just another clear sky, sun just rising. We're running out of food. We're running out of energy. We're running out of drive. One of the guys even suggested, I mean, this horrified me, that we're thriving. He really needed dipping his head in the Pacific, and I would have done it a few years ago. I've ensured this island has enough water, animals and vegetation on it to keep the men alive, but only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. What's the catch, mate? Nothing, mate. Nothing? No. Ah! The fish catch was sucked, it was shit. Yeah. So we still have to focus on getting food for today. Now in their fourth week, the group is fractured and food is scarce as a result. Oysters are almost out. Fish, fish is, uh, comes in, comes out, feast or famine. Uh, we've got no carbohydrate left on the island that we know of. Do you, OK, so are we really doing more slogs round the island? Or die. It's quite interesting what's happened in the last few days because the group is beginning to split, essentially. It's incredible. We're just not eating enough. <laughs> We're just not eating enough. Whatever shape, form or fashion it takes, we need someone to focus our group of 13 men. Now the dwindling supplies of food are seeing the men's bodies begin to shut down. 
I'm not even kidding. My experience of the toilet this morning was like trying to squeeze a watermelon through a straw, which is becoming a little bit more of a common occurrence and one that I'm not particularly enjoying. It's the diet we're eating, it's the lack of fibre, lack of fruit, it's the dehydration which just sucks moisture out of everything in your body. And some people are really, really suffering. When I go to the toilet, water comes out first and then what I can only describe as dried up hay that is way too big to actually the size of my bum hole. What you've got is a very severe constipation. Impacted stool with overflow diarrhoea. It's the dehydration which is just sucking moisture out of everything that it can inside the body. You've had the same. Well, I've, and I've... He, Sam had to use Sam had to use a stick to, to what prize is out, like a shoehorn. Well, thanks for sharing the stick, the stick piece of information, it's true. We what do we do about it? Up. We don't have any laxatives. We've tried the natural laxatives. We haven't got that many figs, we're running out. We've tried having several coconuts today. So the only thing that I can think of left is the pipe of justice. Using a water bottle and pipe they found washed up on the beach, <laughs> Dr Sam has fashioned an enema kit. So I'll just, I'll just lay on the floor, I'll stick the pipe up the bum, and then Sam just squeezes the liquid in, I suppose. Oh, my, hang on. Jeez, that is not easy to get out. I'll hold it. You ready? Yeah. That feels weird. Yeah. All right, now, I'm just going to gently push in, OK? Oh, my Lord! Whoa! Flippin' heck, that is really weird! Put it on tight so it doesn't all come out. Ah! Oh, oh my... Good Lord! I try and hold it up there for a bit. Okay. Some of it will be absorbed, some of it will hopefully just soften that stool up and then... Right. ..and then go and get it out. It's definitely done something. What it's done, I don't know. While Dan waits for the enema to take effect... Little fish. ..it's every man for himself in their quest to find breakfast. I want to get it quick, aren't they? I mean, the thing is, we're out of coconuts. We've reached pretty much all the low-reaching ones that we can get with sticks and bashing. So what I'm going to do is just work my way up. This goes around you, so you can kind of lean back on the tree, that kind of thing. I'm having to use my strong sphincter control to hold that water up my bum. Extreme hunger affects not only, obviously, your physical strength, but also your decision-making ability. Gun range. And it can become this vicious downward spiral where you get weaker, you get less strength, you make less good decisions. I've got to go, mate. And therefore your hunting abilities plummet. Oh, oh my goodness. Worked amazingly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm massively lacking energy. My muscles and my legs, my arms just feel dead. We are starving. Really need to focus or come up with a way of getting more food for the group because uh, I don't think we're doing that great. And it's affected the mood in the camp. People are just so lethargic. People just do get in. There's not enough communication. There's certain people in the group who will just do something for themselves. And now, all of a sudden, I feel hungry, and I mean painfully hungry. I can't think straight. Stingray! Stingray! Let's see, I'm just going to do one, two, three, and I'm going to bring him out, OK? Yeah, go on. OK, yeah, yeah, OK, all right, all right, OK, OK, I've got it. OK, I've got it, I've got it. With the group hungry and fragmented, a fresh catch is a lifeline for the men. <laughs> Animal lover Ryan has spotted the killing on his camera. They've just caught a stingray. They didn't kill it straight away like they should have done. 
we get fish in our gill net. Bang on. Amazing. What could go wrong? What the fuck is he doing? The quickest way to kill a stingray is to drive a sharp knife between its eyes. Are there any other knives in the camp? You just can't find any knives anywhere. What are you doing? Somebody please put it out of its misery. OK, we'll grab a knife. Come on, stop it in its head, man. OK, we're, look, it's just trying to get a rock get a and, a, and a knife. Calm down. Calm down. Fuck's sake. Hey, 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 stop. Man, you need to grab a hold of yourself. Man. That's it. That was horrific. Stop for a second and just breathe. This isn't about you, mate. I, I know it's not about me. It's about that stingray so, suffering. I want to stand it the spray. We you. haven't got a He's, knife. Exactly. With they didn't have the one. Well, well, I've run up and down the beach. I've run up and down the beach ten times. Right, I think you, you need to go away and take ten that? minutes. What are you sniggering at? What, what did you just fucking do a wanker sign towards me? Fuck you. Well, I only got half of that. What was going on, mate? Talk to me, right? You fucking made a right meal of killing that stingray. Why are you pointing Damn. at me? Why would I'm I do pointing that? pointing the big Tony finger at you. Then you got Rupert walking past, fucking doing wanker sign at me. Yeah, that was out of order. Doing a wanker sign. It doesn't help, I know. Yeah. You are not finding the physical side of this difficult. The side that you find difficult is dealing with people like him yeah. without losing your shit, without putting him a wanker, without driving him off into the jungle if we were indefinitely to die and starve on his own as a lonely man. Yeah, yeah. That is, that's the challenge for you. That's the personal challenge for you. It really doesn't take much for groups to split apart. You know, it's often small differences make great chasms. But now things have got so bad, even a fresh food catch can't heal the group. It wouldn't have really mattered whether it was a stingray in the net or a UFO landing on the on the island. I think the point is that tensions are now running high. We're, we're a ship without a rudder, and we need someone to grab that rudder and get this camp in good working order. We desperately need a leader now. In the wild, when people are under pressure and your life is on the line, you've got to do all you can to keep a group cohesive and together. Tony, I'd like to call a meeting in 15 minutes because when it's together, it's strong. It's not strong when it's fragmented and broken. I'd like to call a meeting. I'm in. 43-year-old director Matt lives with his partner and daughter in East London and has some experience of filming in hostile environments. This is conflict every day, and it's Lord of the Flies, essentially. There's a risk of not working together as a cohesive team. That's, that's the nightmare situation. What I'd like to think is that we're all pretty sensible and we all get on with it and we all, you know, we all thrive in the environment and, and really make something good happen. There's just something on my mind I wanted to sort of share with you. I think it's no secret that there are fracture lines appearing within our group. That's no secret. We could think about electing a leader, someone who can, you know, bring unity to all of us. I think we're moment, too late into this to suddenly come up yeah. with a whole new structure which is going to Well, I disagree, Rupert. Really, I, I, I yeah. sort of believe in seizing the moment, and I think this is the moment I to seize it. I think it's it. way too late. Mate, I think well, this is the time to well, seize the moment. And, you well, know, if I we're disagree. going to let this moment pass, then, then I think we're all doing ourselves a disservice. If a leader is elected, mm -hmm. it will be a leader's job to make sure that everyone is doing the things they've undertaken to do. I fully understand why you're saying it, because I agree that we are kind of drifting. I mean, I agree we need to go out and do stuff, but that's down to your personal responsibility and commitment to this project on every single person. I think a leader's a really bad idea. It's not like we all have to be, like, all hail to the leader and be scared of him or anything like that. But that's a not what we've been, but that's no, what we've been told to do, though. Finish, please, yeah. But... So, um... It's an argument, Dan. People interject. I know, but you, you don't... The way that the conversation finish, goes is just, one person yeah. says something and the other person says something. It goes like that, one backwards and forwards, rather than speaking over the top. Matt also proposes the elected leader organises a party to unite the group. To stitch those fracture lines together and come back together again as a group of 13. We could just say we have a project, and that is the sorting out of our camp and the preparation for a celebration. So uh, would, it, would it be a better comment to say we're electing a project manager rather than a leader? If you want to call it a project manager and someone's in charge of building up for the celebrations, fine. If that's something we should all vote upon rather than voting for a leader, then maybe that's the way forward. I will second so, I your proposal. Thank I you, Tony. I will second your proposal. Shall we put it to a vote, gentlemen? 
Uh, those in favour, put your arms in the air, please. <laughs> Pretty unanimous. That's fantastic, guys. Can I suggest that those who want to put their names forward as a candidate do so now? Chris, thanks, CB. CB. Sam, sorry. I'll go for it. Yeah, and exactly. 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 I'm going to put my name forward as well. Let's Just to get throw it. something in there. Yeah. Come on. Oh, Excellent. Excellent. Hey. <laughs> Bruce, put yourself up for leadership. Hmm? I don't want to be a leader. I didn't come here to be a leader. So Sounds like something. it. No, I don't think that we, we need one. I think we just need a bit more sense of personal responsibility for everybody to get us through to the end now. So, just had a very interesting meeting about appointing a... Well, originally it started as a leader, but I think Rupert's very uncomfortable with that term. But essentially, it is a leader, but we've called it a project manager. How did you think the meeting went? Um, Rupert was very opposed to being... Uh, their, for, to there being a leader, having assumed that role himself for most of the last three weeks. Across the island, four of the men are preparing for their first election. Let's go through the candidates. So we've got Zaki, Doc Sam, Fletch and Chris Burrows. Let me deal with Chris Burrows. I'm not too sure about his team leadership skills. CB definitely has the skills. He has a vision and he's very humane. And I won't be voting for him. Zaki, uh, observe Zaki, and I think Zaki will be a good project leader, manager. We're playing with words between leader and manager. Who are you voting for? Who are you voting for? I'm going to, I'm going to wait until I hear their manifestos. I'm really? Gonna, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. He certainly is a floating vote at the moment. Sam has been tirelessly enthusiastic, but he can't actually say to people, come on, mate. It's about motivation. It's not about telling people what to do. It's about motivating them to do it. We then come to Mike Fletcher. I think Fletcher would be brilliant at it because he's decisive, he's hard-working, he's practical. Mike Fletcher and I don't get on. Mike Fletcher, you're not a leader. You're just full of bullshit. So, Rupert, what are you up to, mate? Looking for small round voting tokens for the upcoming somewhat pointless election. <laughs> you, think it's, you think it's pointless? For the last two and a half weeks. You virtually did become the leader, Rupert. What yeah, I, like, uh, I don't know. I, mean, I guess maybe I don't think that actually needs to be kind of elected for that to work. I think kind of leadership comes naturally in a way. I think electing somebody is, is difficult. I'm glad you don't want to be the leader. He's a control freak. He thinks he knows best all the time. He's just basically an arsehole. Right, everyone, welcome to the first Shirley Island election. One by one, the candidates outline their vision for a united, efficient camp. Right. So we're all supposed to come up with a manifesto about how we're going to run this project. I don't have a manifesto. I have a work ethic. Everybody around the room has got a vision. I would go around everybody individually and speak to them one-on-one -on -one what they would like to do. We need to share the same idea. Our ideas need to be collective. I'm not here to bark orders at people. All I'm asking, you give up your best. Everybody should be able to look each other in the eye, shake hands and say, we may have had our differences, but I respect you. The only thing I would do be to facilitate the smoother running and efficiency of this camp so that over there by that bonfire we have 13 torches we light that fire we sing at the top of our voices and we leave with our hands held motherfucking high yeah. Yeah. that was powerful man all four men have made their pleas but there's a last minute candidate right right, right. let's go for it ryan yep the people who stepped forward 
I honestly looked and I thought, you know what, I can do a better job than they can. So I've stepped up. Hi, right, everyone. I know people might think it's a bit of a joke, a bit of a joke candidate, but uh, I really do think this is my time to shine. Um, basically, I don't really like to be organised, but the thing is, when I want to be, I can be very hyper-organised. And I'd like the chance to prove to you all that I'm not a complete tosser and that I could do it and I could make a good job. Okay. Very good. That's well, great, mate. Well done. Thank you. Each candidate has um, his own token. So, for example, Saki has almonds, uh, Ryan has snails, Sam has shells, Fletch has uh, inedible nuts, and CB has um, a nice, delicate piece of palm leaf. Each member of the group must now vote, placing their chosen token in the coconut ballot box. I'm really excited. I'm very excited. <laughs> Shall I get the coconut? <laughs> Release the coconut. Release the coconut. It's like the National Lottery on a Saturday night, isn't it? Here we go. In wilderness situations, when everything is on the line, you really see what matters in a leader. And if the men are to survive the rest of their time on the island, electing the right leader could make all the difference. Matt is the official returning officer. Whoever does win this, I think it's really important that we all get behind them. You know, even if it's not our favourite candidate and stuff like that. Well said, Cliff. Well said. And the winner is... <sighs> that is a clear winner. Saki! I hope that I make you all proud at the end of this fucking journey. And we can all say that we came, we saw, and we conquered. Well said. Well said, mate. Thank you. Saki absolutely cleaned up. He got seven votes, and the rest of us got six to share between us. So I'm really, really pleased. And I think he bridges that gap between the, the two groups that are splintering off a little bit. Um, he's, he's pally with the younger lot, but he's also got the respect of the older contingent. Um, so I think it'd be really good to bring everyone together. <laughs> a leader serves, essentially. It's not there to kind of sit on the throne, it's there to serve people. And I remember always being told that nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And, and for a leader, that is critical, that people know you care for them. It looked at times as if our group wasn't even going to agree on, on having a leader. But let's make no mistake, we do have a leader. We don't have a project manager. We have a leader for the 13 men on Shirley Island, and his name is Saki. Morning. Again. Morning. 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 Right. To business, I suppose. It's Saki's first day as leader. We need to gather the food. To improve their chances of survival, he's delegating tasks to the men so they can find food more efficiently. I'd like to stay on oysters. How many people would you need with you to just, do that? Just one other person. Who wants to do oysters with Rupert? Yeah. I'm happy to do oysters. I think we were all in agreement, speaking to everybody last night, that the first two courses of action should be to get the water and the firewood sorted. Can and I suggest we get the nets in first? Just let those fish sit in there. It won't take long. We just pull them in, get them out. It's like 20 minutes, but... It won't take long for the firewood either. I say we go with the firewood. Who it's just would like to fish help? on a on a line? That's all. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. No. But if we take 20 minutes to do the firewood, mm -hmm. it's not really going to compromise the fish. And another thing I need to say is, everybody has siesta time. During that time, you can do whatever the fuck you like. You can sleep, you can sunbathe, you can wank. That's. You can <laughs> do whatever you like. I just make a point. Your job's project manager at siesta time kind of doesn't fall under that. Yeah, but this is just reassurance, mate. Yeah, no. Good. I'm just reassuring yeah, people because everybody was. Hang on. Everybody was worried sort of about this what before. What your role is, yeah. Everyone was worried about the leader saying, no, you have to do this at any time and blah, blah, blah. And what I'm, I'm saying is, all I'm saying is mm. that siesta time is still your time. Rupert really struggling with uh, having the leader. Everybody else completely on board. We elected a project manager yeah. not to dictate rules like what's happening, uh, siesta time and all that kind of thing. Yeah, well, I'm, not, I'm not dictating rules. No, I know, I know. I'm just we're covering stuff that's not perhaps we'll under your... We'll get to there, don't yeah. worry. OK. By the way, Rupert, these aren't my ideas. No, no, I know. 
I know, but I'm just that was the election. Yeah, but was about. let me, let me finish. Yeah, that's all. These aren't my ideas. This is what everyone has put to me. No, no, I, that's I agree. All I, I just I sounded like it came Let me finish. Me. Yeah, it just sounded like it came Let me finish. Me. That's, all. that's fine, then. I asked everybody what they wanted done. I'm just doing what ev exactly what I said in my manifesto, I'm trying to facilitate the will of the group. And everybody asked me about siestas, so I'm just saying, do whatever you like with it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you're saying. Right, so we're done now, boys. We're done. Yeah. We're done. Good job, Saki. Well done, Saki. Well done, mate. <laughs> He's a douche. I don't understand what he was trying to achieve there. He kind of cut me off and was like, uh, I thought the project manager was supposed to do this, this and this. And I'm like, hang on, hang on. I haven't got there yet. The meeting's not over yet, you dickhead. As well as coordinating each day's workload, Saki is organising an upcoming beach party to increase unity in the group. As far as I was concerned, we elected a sort of party planner. I just felt it kind of was going a bit beyond all that. It was decisions that were more group things, but... I can't be bothered to fucking argue anymore. We very clearly elected somebody as a project manager for the party, which is basically organising a party, party planning, and getting a bit of food to go. We had a very clear discussion on that we weren't voting for a leader, but that would still remain within the group. So if we start giving Saki that position of doing that, that's then we're saying he's leader, and that's what we didn't do. So I'm very clear on it, and I'm very adamant. I think you're the only person that believes that he should really literally stick to that one focus of party planning and not mm. start to actually coordinate the other things. I, I have an issue on, the, it's a very simple point, that, that, that there is a leader. Before we had mm. uh, Saki in place, you did feel that um, morning meetings were important. In fact, you were adamant that we no, had No, no, I agree. And in fact, you tended to lead them. You know, you said you, you enjoyed that role, you took that role on. We had a chat right at the beginning. Mm. And so you were effectively a self-appointed leader. It's just now that we have a democratically elected leader, you're very resistant to it. Brian? Yeah? Joe! Dino! Saki has called some of the men together as a chance sighting by Ryan could lead them to a food source rich in energy. Uh, me and Joe went on a fig run. On the way, we saw some bees. The men are heading to the spot where Ryan saw some bees, close to where they first set up camp almost a month ago, in the hope of discovering honey. Prospect of honey. Gives me a boner. Do you know? Ryan told us he found bees. Nobody else believed him. We walked through the jungle in order to regain some respect from some of the members of this group who just clearly disregard him at every opportunity. Four people have gone looking for honey. I know. It's like I bang on the drum, sound the war drums against complacency, and four of them go for a stroll, look for honey, and now we've got no food. Does anyone know what they're looking for here? I, I thought I heard buzzing. But... I can hear buzzing. I can hear like a deep drone, actually. Yeah. Hey, guys, come here, look at this. It's got bees on it galore. Very good spot, Ryan. Holy there. fuckaroni. This is it, guys. We have found a beehive. Ryan, you are a legend, mate. There's no guarantee the men will find honey in the hive, but having been starved of sugar for almost a month, they are willing to take the risk. And now it's honey time for three hours to get it and come back and hopefully get ourselves some honey. And maybe finally Ryan and Rupert can put their demons to bed. And Rupert can take him seriously. The men have returned to camp, grabbing whatever tools they can find to get to the beehive within the tree trunk. I've got the hot embers of our fire, which is gonna, sm oh, which is gonna smoke out the bees. I've got everyone's clothes. Several species of bees inhabit this island, and if the men encounter the Africanized bee, its sting can kill. Right, straight away, clear the area. Machetes out, clear away all the dry leaves and shit. I've never been so focused about anything on this trip as this. What about if they just come swarming out, fucking hundreds of them? Yeah, if they do, that'll be a sight to see, mate. And also, run. My bum was going like this. What have you got on there, mate? 
These are my multi-purpose boxer shorts. Using them so they stop the bees attacking my face. The smoke from a small fire should make the bees drowsy and less likely to attack. There we go. By opening up the small hole in the trunk, the smoke should repel the bees and let the men explore the hive. This is it, lads. They're starting to come out. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Should I just shove the shit in there? Yeah, go on. Go on. The fuck is that? That's fucking. Oh, 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 taste it! Taste that shit! I do the whole thing. Oh my god, that, oh my is, god. that is the sweetest thing. That's honeycomb, motherfucker! That's honeycomb! Oh my god. Leave this, mate. Look, contain it. Mate, that is the best honey I've ever tasted in my life. Mate, give me a shit. Mate, it's so sweet. Take, 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 take. Oh, right, oh my god. Yeah. Oh. oh my god. Get it, contain it. Contain it, guys. That's honey. Ryan, you fucking genius. <laughs> this is this is this is that's the sweetest thing you've ever tasted. Oh, I was like, no, it can't be, it can't be, and I was like, it is. I think as a society, our palates have become so conditioned just to sugar, salt, and fat, and for these guys, stripped of that, it's almost like instant detox. Look at us now, sweating like bitches, but we've got energy to get that honey. You won't be able to know what it's like unless you've been 23 days with barely any food. You won't be able to experience, but. When you taste something sweet, it's almost like you can feel the sugar going from your tongue into your stomach and just straight into your brain, almost like doing a line of whiz or something. And it tastes unbelievable. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. Seriously. That's the toughie stuff, that. That's the toughie. How are you feeling? <laughs> I think we should walk back, and then Ryan should drop a bombshell. We've got fucking honey. Right, how are you going to put this out? Woo! You get my penis there? No. Hi, guys, what you got? Ryan, what have we got? I've got us a sexy-ass little treat for tonight. Some honey! Nice! Honey! Oh, really? Honey. We oh, took it down. Yeah. And it's fucking nice. It's the nicest honey in the world. That is awesome. Who found that? Ryan. Right, no way. How did you get it out? Did you light a fire? We had embers in the tin. Oh, brilliant. That's awesome. Yeah. Genius. Oh. Clever boys. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, well what a fantastic end to an incredible day. Well, it's going to be a, a fucking good meal tonight, it is. Three courses, if we, if we please. I hope that this, this pushes towards a bit of a resolution. I mean, I've got my, um, my reservations about Rupert, but I would rather we all were just getting along, and I hope that maybe he has a little bit more respect for Brian, really, for getting out there and doing that. Don't Thanks worry, you hey, legend. Hi, mate. Well done, mate. Well done, really, really, really well done, mate. Thanks, Fletch. Yeah, we got a load of oysters, limpets, and, yeah, some well, more good. coconuts. Um, Brian. Yeah, well, there's been lots of different Ryans on this trip, hasn't there? He's actually grafting really hard the last few days, which he wasn't at the beginning. Um, I think he's starting to realise what hard work means. I mean, we're never going to be bosom buddies or anything like that, but it's hard not to like him. For dinner, the men have come together to feast on oysters with honey. I mean, I think the whole sacky thing, and I have the utmost amount of respect for the job he's done. Oh, um, God. Yeah, I mean, uh, what's my problem with leadership? Um, I've always had a problem with people telling me what to do, I guess, is one of them. Um, I don't like it. I'm not very good at it. 
Oh, wow. I rebelled a lot my teenage years. I couldn't deal with authority. And even to this day, I'm still not very good when people tell me what to do. But I don't know whether that's a bad quality. I don't feel it always is. I think sometimes it's good, but it's not always an admirable one. So maybe that's something I need to learn from this experience. After dinner, Ryan reflects on his reaction over the stingray killing. I regret having a vicious tongue in my life. People said it to me today, it's not going to get me anywhere. But I'm a, I'm a tosser, basically. You are a dick when you, when you go off on one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have our moments, Fletch, I'm sure. We certainly do, mate. Yeah. We certainly do. I mean, that's one thing you can be rest assured of, Brian. Everyone else here can be a complete dickhead as well at times, though. Especially me. So you're not alone. Oh, well, I think it'd be nice if we can all get through the last of days with smiles on our faces and enjoy it. Gonna really, really miss this place. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank God that started working again. <laughs> Hey, morning. There's a real new found energy amongst everyone here at the camp. Great sense of optimism, a great sense of purpose. Everyone seems to be pulling in the right direction. I am amazed. I haven't seen so much energy around this camp for about a week. I couldn't have asked for a better morning. I think Saki's done a fantastic job and uh, everyone is behind him. So we're just going round to see um, CB. He's building the raft so we can get some crab pots out. We were dropped here with three knives, three machetes. That was it. And we've sourced food. We've sourced water. We've sourced our own home. We've made beds, tables. And we are bloody amazing. Through adversity, come out the other side, united together, and gone. You asked us to survive and thrive. We've done more than that. We have absolutely nailed this. It's a men's last night on the island after an entire month away from civilization. Tomorrow, they'll be going home. All right, boys. Fire's ready. Food needs cooking. Let the party begin! Yeah! So this is it. This was like the pipe dream. It's just amazing, fantastic. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than I am now. I really wouldn't in the world. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Cheers, guys. For the best time of my life, anyway, lads. Oh, Thank you. Oh, Good on you, Jeff. You can get out more, son. How far we've come from half an oyster and six snails each, eh? Just in the ways of the ancient peoples, uh, we thought it would be very nice tonight uh, to offer something back to the ocean uh, with a huge display of gratitude and thanks. All right, guys, we're going to launch our raft of gratitude to the ocean. There we go. Fantastic job. Just settling on the whole experience and coming to the end and really excited about leaving, but going to really, really miss this place. Last day on shore the island and I've been hit with an extreme sense of depression. And it's mad because I'll be fucked if I can't wait to speak to my girlfriend. But it's hit me that we are leaving and it's making me sad. I've got to turn my emails back on tomorrow and I don't want to do that. And there's a big alarm bell going like that, big flashy light. Then why don't you want to do that? What is wrong? What is wrong with life back home that makes you fear that side of it so much? And that kind of what this island helps you understand. But on the same time, okay. 
it helps you appreciate what you've got. The best thing I'm looking forward to is, um, is see, seeing my mum and dad. That's it. I'm sure we'll all agree this has been an amazing fucking journey. Um, 28 days and not one of us left. We all came here at the same time. We all went through the same things. We argued, we fell in love, we fought, we made up. And on that note, I have a little poem that I was using pretty much as a prayer for all the times I got really hard, when it was really hard to pull through. And it goes uh, a little something like this. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not cried nor winced aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. Yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me, us, unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I've said to them over and over again a few days before they started on the island. Just remember, the pain won't last forever. But the end goal has now arrived, and um, we're going to take them home. I can see their fire. There he is, boys. Oh, my oh, come on. Oh, 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 oh. How are we feeling, guys? So excited. Fucking excited, man. This is it. We've done it. All we've worked for has come down to this moment. Look at you guys. <laughs> Hairier. Oh, yeah. Skinnier. Yeah. But hopefully smarter. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, Thank you. Before the men leave, there's just one thing left for them to do. Yeah. After three, let's say goodbye to Camp Barsi. One, two, two three. three. Yeah. Watch the steam, watch the steam. I think we live in such a fast and materialistic culture, and I think what these guys have proved, actually, when you're stripped of all of that, they're made of something decent. And they've only proved that one way, and that's through hardship. It's going to be a wonderful thing now to leave with them and then reintroduce them to life. And let's hope they, they focus on the good side of things and leave behind the bad stuff. Some people may think, well done, Tony, or they may think, Silly old bugger. See you later, surely. Oh, surely. We're all different. 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s, but there's still life at 70. The greatest thing about this experience, I think, was this amazing opportunity to really think in depth about who you are, your life. So I'm kind of looking at a new future, and so it's been great having that time to really think about where I'm going, what I'm going to do. I've always seen myself as lazy. Here, you can't really be lazy. Mine now is focused and sharp. I've got a sense of ambition that I've never felt before, which is going to change my life. A happier one for me. I really think that I have undergone quite a big change in my head. I think having had everything just taken away and stripped to the absolute bare bones of, of nothing, I feel like I'm going to appreciate just just everything so much more, I really do. I've still got a bucket list at my age, and, and I realise, really, that I've got to bloody get on with it and not spend the next 10 years just keeping up with emails. 
I came on a boy who almost didn't know where I wanted to go in life, just plotting along, just thinking, yeah, I got a job, whatever. And now I feel as if I'm leaving like a man. It doesn't matter what sort of person you are, what sort of man you are, you can do anything and achieve anything you want to. Fucking hell. We did it. We came, we saw, we conquered. We did it. <laughs>